Water is the stuff of life. Over 70% of our planet is covered with it. And of course, we use it every day. How is artificial intelligence being used to help us better manage water? And how can the technology help us make sure that there's enough of it for us to use in the future? Welcome to Impact with AI. I'm your host, Brandon Andrews. Excited to dive into another conversation with an entrepreneur using artificial intelligence and machine learning technology to impact the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, today, I'm joined by Camilo, who is CEO of AI in Water. Excited for the conversation. Welcome to Impact with AI. How are you and AI in Water driving impact? At AI in Water? We are driving impact by making water treatment plants operate smoothly, secure, reduce non-compliance risk, and save energy. Brandon, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me here. I did it the other way around because usually in podcasts, when you listen, people are like, you ask the question and people are like, thank you for having me. Such a great opportunity. And you as the <laughs> listener, you want to like have the answer. First. Yeah, you want to so, hear. Yeah. <laughs> I went, I went for the answer first. Good stuff. Good stuff, man. Well, it sounds like uh, you and the team are building something great. Tell me a little bit more about the origin story. Where did you get this, the idea for the concept uh, and how did you begin implementing it? So it, uh, it could go all the way back from when I was a child. Uh, wow. well, I, grew mm -hmm. up, I grew up in a farm. Uh, where in southern Chile, in Patagonia, and I remember in the early 90s, um, a big drought where I had to, well, I grew up doing that, but particularly that drought where I had to help my mother um, taking water out of the well. And mm -hmm. I remember the uncertainty she had. Will mm -hmm. there be water? Will I have water? And since it's a drought, the water quality is going to be good for my animals? Mm -hmm. And at the time I was 10 years old, but I do remember knowing that there was instru instruments, data, like NASA had information. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that in theory, it was possible to be able to have that information and to predict it. Of course, I saw the weather forecast. So I was like, why couldn't we do something similar with the water that we, we use? Mm -hmm. That's from when I was a child. Now, uh, as today, uh, the basically it comes from the experience, uh, not only for myself, also my, the, our co-founders, that in a nutshell, we saw how chemical engineers, um, hydraulic engineers, environmental engineers, uh, and on the other hand, you have chemical um, data science engineers, artificial intelligence engineers, electronics control, that mm -hmm. don't, don't talk to each other. Each other. Oh. There are engineers listening here, you will, engineers will know that as a hydraulic engineer, uh, you take the data, like your equations for your book or your mathematical mm -hmm. model, but all that, that real-time data that you have from the sensors, etc., you don't really use it. But the mm -hmm. machine learning people, they do use it, but they don't have a clue about how water behaves. So yep. we saw that gap. And with, with seeing that gap is how we started over four years ago the, the company. Wow, that's incredible. So the data was already there. The expertise was already there. You just needed to make the connection. And now you're able to help uh, folks better manage uh, water, which, of, of course, is a although an abundant resource, it's, it's a limited resource, especially when we talk about having it available for specific communities at specific times to make sure that we can meet uh, consumer demand. Really interesting stuff and happy that you were able to find that gap and, and now create a business and uh, and some technology that's filling it. So let's talk a little bit about the technology that you're using to fill that gap. I understand it's called Poseidon. Um, how did you come up with the concept and, and how are you using artificial intelligence to uh, drive the impact that you're making? Well, Poseidon, as the god of water, uh, knows mm -hmm. everything about the water. Um, mm -hmm. So... Um, more than the technology itself, what we do is we use the available technology, which today is machine learning and AI. Uh -huh. Ten years ago, could probably was expert models. We have, would have used that. In ten years into the future, God knows. Poseidon only. Poseidon knows what we. Yeah. Was well, it going to be um, quantum in a few years? Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, 
And uh, so basically, uh, the, the objective of using this technology in our case, because you can use AI and machine learning for many things in water. And mm -hmm. I'm happy to dive into the different applications you have. In our case, we work with the water treatment plant, the drinking water treatment plant for a, either industry, a factory or a city and the wastewater treatment plant from a city or a factory. Mm -hmm. And what we do is basically we first, we help the operator have all the data in place and analyze that data quickly. And that's mm -hmm. when new AI solutions come into play. For example, you can we have the chatbot and you can ask, hey, how was how was my flow and my inflow in influent flow last week? Boom, mm -hmm. the answer, instead of mm -hmm. having a dashboard, etc. And two, as an as a city or industrial operator, you want to know what's going to happen in your plant. And with mm -hmm. machine learning based models, we're able to predict what's going to happen. Hey, pH is going to increase. Mm -hmm. So you can take action. And in some mm -hmm. cases, we don't only say, hey, pH is going to increase. We say, hey, since pH is going to increase to X number, you should, dos your chemical dosage should be X number. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, we help whoever runs the plant, we use the modern solutions we have for having the data in order and understand it quickly. And second, mm -hmm. with that data, predict what's going to happen for ensuring compliance and reduced operational costs. Mm. Makes perfect sense. Now, I know for a lot of industries, actually getting the data, like you said, in order is such a big task before you can even get into the fun part, if you will, of beginning to use the data and do some prediction. How exactly do you help people uh, get their data in order? And, and how long does that take for a, a plant that may have decades of, of data in terms of uh, their plant operations, but may not uh, have it in a format that's immediately applicable to some of the, the AI solutions? Well, Brandon, you are hitting the nail. Um, <laughs> um, we believe that sometimes we should charge for a consultancy for having the data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, the, the first thing is that first, many, many uh, operators believe that they can't uh, or that they that they can use the data they have because they're like, hey, mm -hmm. I have Excel sheets and once in mm -hmm. a year, and they're like, I don't have data. That's what mm -hmm. But once you talk to them a little bit, dude, they do have a lot of information, but they don't really, they don't know that they, that they have it. Yeah. Um, for example, first, as an engineer, probably many engineers will want to have new sensors. It's like, dude, mm -hmm. you already have information. You don't necessarily need new sensors. Yeah, if we have all the money in the world, let's go and buy new sensors. But money. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, it's not a not so much of a technology thing. Yes, the large language models applications um, do help. Uh, mm -hmm for um, having the data in order. And this, our solution has an, an aspect, a, a, a feature where you can input manually data, comments, et cetera, like your log report, have everything mm -hmm. already there. But the important part here is more on, on culture and understanding that, yeah, you have those Excel sheets somewhere. And those mm -hmm. Excel sheets that you believe that are not useful because you have, I don't know, daily data, they are mm -hmm. useful. So let's integrate them. And mm -hmm. basically that were comes into machine learning using uh, what is called ETL processes, extracting, transforming, right. and loading the data, we are able to have multiple input and data sources. But centrally is culture, is understanding that you have information and that information that you have is useful. I think that's such a big thing that you mentioned the cultural piece, because if folks don't see what they have is valuable, then it'll never be ingested into any model and to be used for training and then hopefully to have some kind of positive impact down the road. So that cultural piece, that human piece in the system is, is so important still, even as we're talking about artificial intelligence and being able to do predictive analysis and, and, and automate pieces. Um, now that we've learned a little bit about the technology, let's talk about your impact. Um, 
As you know, the United Nations developed a range of sustainable development goals. Of course, water, not only management, but conservation and use is a significant part of several of those goals. So let's talk about it. Where do you see yourself impacting the sustainable development goals and uh, driving them forward as we look at uh, the 2030 uh, goal period? We are... Um... I'm not good with remembering. I work in AI and I'm bad <laughs> I don't remember numbers. <laughs> it's all good. All good. So on SDG 6, uh -huh. indicator, I should look at my notes. Um, oh, no, it's okay. Basically, the, the impact that we're having, for example, we're working with the Anglo-American Foundation here in Chile, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. working with 83 uh, small rural communities mm. that... Um, they, they are basically the finance and the support and the relationship with the communities comes from the Anglo American Foundation. They support mm -hmm. the communities around their mining operations, and we're applying uh, this AI technology to technology to this 83 rural rural services. What we're mm -hmm. doing, and that's where you see small impacts that can literally change a life. In um, it's an hour away from from Santiago, the capital of Chile, where mm -hmm. you have uh, actually very good indicators on water access. Like compared mm -hmm. to other places in Latam, it's really good. But for example, there is uh, one small town um, community where they they don't have enough water. So every day from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., they just shut the water down. Mm -hmm. But thanks to the model, now what they're going to be able to do is say we say that we tell them like, hey, you could today. You, 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 you don't need to shut their water down at 2, maybe at 2.31 two, at two today. Mm -hmm. uh, and that half an hour extra means that particularly women, because mm -hmm. uh, on SDG 6 in particular, it's women that are affected the most. Mm -hmm. Women, because sadly enough, it is what it is. Uh, women are the one that spends more time at home or, or yep. taking care of the children, uh, mm -hmm. have extra 30 minutes of extra water that has a strong impact. So yeah. what we do, we have um, the the impact on access to water, not by, by creating new water sources, but optimizing the available water sources in a stress, uh, water stress area. And mm -hmm. we um, help ensure compliance. That mm -hmm. That's one of the SDG indicators, making sure that yeah. water is properly treated. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. And I, I love how you got to the granular household level with how you're driving impact, um, even being able to uh, understand the day to day lives of people in local communities and how better management of water, better access to water, better availability, pH balance, whatever it might be, is really impacting the lives of, of, of folks on, on a regular basis. And so um, I know you're impacting SDG 6, but like many companies, you're probably impacting SDG 9, industry, innovation and industry, and, and even with yours, maybe even SDG 14, as we think about life mm -hmm. below water and making sure that we are conserving and, uh, and making sure that uh, our fish and other friends that, that live in our water um, have a good environment uh, as, as well. So, uh, Camilo, here's the big question that I'm asking everyone that I interview. Um, some of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are behind. Do you think AI can help rescue the Sustainable Development Goals and get them on track? I'm sorry, it's not the answer that you expect, but no, because it's not AI. Uh, AI mm -hmm. is a tool. As a mm -hmm. tool, it will help. As a yep. tool, but this is politics. It's mm -hmm. politics. Our political leaders want have to have the political will to drive those SDGs. And yes, mm -hmm. if they have the political will, AI will make things faster, quicker, mm -hmm. and useful. But if they don't want to, AI is not going to solve it. They have to work well, I, I think that's a I think that's a great response. Um, you may not know this about me, but I started my career working in the United States Senate. So I was on Capitol Hill on, in Washington, D.C. And, you know, there's so many things from a policy standpoint that make perfect sense. But without the political will to do it, it's just not going to happen without a member of Congress or a coalition, without the public advocating for things to move forward. 
things that make, again, perfect sense. And everyone would agree when asked, hey, we should do this. Hey, we have to do this. And, you know, even you look at the SDGs, you had every UN member state agree that, hey, these 17 global goals, reaching them by 2030 is actually absolutely critical to creating the world that all of our children deserve, because we always want to pass on something better to them. But you're absolutely right. Without the political will, things won't move forward. So I appreciate that, uh, that, that honest answer. And you did still say, hey, AI has the potential to have positive impact here, but we've got to make sure that our leadership and infrastructure um, is there and that we have the will to, to actually implement things. Great stuff, man. Well, thanks again for joining us here at Impact with AI. Loved hearing about Poseidon and some of your personal story as well. Um, how can people contact you and support the work that you and AI and Water are doing? Thank you. Um, or for contact, our website, uh, aiandwater.com, and my email, camilo, C-A-M-I-L-O, at aiandwater.com, aiandwater.com. And spread the word. Uh, if you work with a plant, you know anyone that has a water treatment plant or a wastewater mm -hmm. treatment plant, well, tell them to use AI and water. Awesome, okay. awesome. And are you targeting any regions around the world currently, or can you uh, assist uh, water treatment plants or facilities worldwide now? Yeah, so technically speaking, we can work anywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, our focus in terms of implementation is Latin America, mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. uh, Chile, Brazil, and Mexico. We have operations in those three countries. Mm -hmm. And we have a small foot uh, starting pilots in Spain. So awesome. in terms of technology, we could do it anywhere. But if you want me to work in Mongolia, I don't speak <laughs> the language, but technically we can. <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, I had a great time in Ulaanbaatar, the capital of, of Mongolia, a number of years ago. Random. I won't get into the story now, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure they would love to have uh, your uh, your innovation there. They'd love to, to, to see Poseidon's uh, trident in Ulaanbaatar. We'll, we'll call it that uh, at some point soon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, thanks again, everyone, for joining us for another episode of Impact with AI. Um, if you'd like to see more of these interviews, visit impactwithai.media or subscribe to our playlist on YouTube. We'll see you next time.